One, two, three, four. Okay, to take off the uh, uh, tank, you just have to unloosen these things. There's two bolts, so as you see, you can do. Yeah, just Allen keys. Whip them off. Then this part here, you'll see in two seconds. Careful not to lose the washers around yep. on top of them. That's right. And don't over tighten when you put them back on. That lifts up. As you can see, and then we've got the tank. We've got the tank. Uh, tank state. State. Yep. Um, looking for some Suzuki directions here. Suzuki what? Mm. Down onto that one. I don't really like that at all, but they are. But you know me. Right, so now there. This is your air filter. Okay, this is the vacuum tube. You can just see it. Is it better? Um, the light? You might just be able to see it. Down at the bottom. That's it, right, right there. See it, just at the end there? Wriggle, it's wiggling wriggle, about. Wriggle, wriggle. It's a grey tube and it's got like a red line on it. That's your vacuum tube. To give you some idea, I'll pan out so you can see where it is. So, and where your air filter is, come down. Right hand side of the bike. Yeah, this is on the right hand side of the bike. So under the air filter, you'll see... Bundle of green yeah. block connectors. Green block connector. And it just and sits just slightly behind it, to the engine side of that block connector. That's it. Basically, just under this green thing, just down under there. Can't see it with this, unfortunately, but just under there, Running along here, there's a sort of grey tube with a, a red line on it. That's your vacuum hose. There's already a T-piece connector in that, I believe. Yeah. And that's the one we're going to cut into. Okay. All right, that is the vacuum hose taken off. I've taken that off the bike, cut into it. Easier to take it off the bike to do your cut. So you don't ca catch a wire or something important. All right. And then you just insert the T-piece. You got a little plastic... Uh, kind of white or light grey plastic TP section. The red line on there. Yeah, see so it's, so it's a grey hose with a sort of red line up it. That's one of your vacuum hoses and they just go to all the different cylinders. This is me telling you just after I've been briefed by Mooley, like I know what I'm talking about. So I squeeze both ends on and then there's a little um, L section that you can see there. That bit there, you just squeeze that onto the, the T piece. Make sure you get it lined up so you don't end up with the vacuum hose twisted. Yeah. Because that affects your throttle bodies and the response from the throttle to the uh, ECU. What he said. You believe I'm taking this round the world by myself. I'm going to be on the phone 24 hours a day. Muli, I'm in Mongolia. It won't start. Help. <laughs> and I'll be saying, find a Suzuki dealer. <laughs> Right, as you can see, these are the instructions you get with Scott Euler. They're generic, they are generic, but they point you in the right direction. So that's what we've done. T-piece, either end of the vacuum hose, L bit on, job done. So that's the section we're at. Right, update so far. We kind of jumped ahead there, sorry, sorry, we got a bit excited. So I'll just run through what we've done. Uh, the vacuum hose at Chrome here has, um, we've run that. Right along the frame, through here, alongside the battery, up through the subframe, in the back, that's this black one here. That goes into the vacuum end of the um, reservoir. The other end, the dispensing end, that's the clear cable. The black cable goes to the vacuum, the clear cable goes to your rear sprocket. That we've routed down through the back of the subframe, down the back here, and if you come around here, It's then fed down past the shock onto the rear spring arm and you get these, you can see them, you get these um, little holders, clips. Self-adhesive. Yeah, self-adhesive um, clips. They stick onto your swing arm and they just hold the tubing and we've, read, we've um, run that all the way around the back swing arm down here and to the rear, rear sprocket. We actually did this in the reverse order. We fitted it here where we wanted it and then ran it backwards and then that way you know you know you, you, the length of tubing that you're going to need pretty straightforward takes a little bit of planning but that's it basically 
and as you can see the oil is starting to drip now into the rear sprocket and as this goes round once we get the um, the rate right which we'll cover shortly that's a job done and um, just, just cover the fact that we've given plenty of slack on that to allow for the swing arm movement yes um, there's a lot of slack there as you can see but obviously this swing arm especially when my fat backside gets on it there's going to be a lot of movement in that swing arm um, the up and the, the, the uh, upward movement isn't too much of a problem but it's when weight comes off the back wheel for example if you're ju doing jumps anything like that uh, or you're braking heavy on the front if the back comes up and the swing arm drops down that's when you need a little bit of um, give if you like so you just need to give yourself a little bit of slack there in the tubing but you'll also need to give yourself quite a lot of slack so that you can pull this out and make any amendments that you need to do prime the system it's nice and easy there's a little handle here, this is your flow rate, it's got prime there, just turn it all the way to max, that's set on prime, you then just pull this bit off, this comes off nice and easy, that leaves a little hole there, in two seconds I'm going to grab the pipe, yeah, you just pull that off there, take this tube, that's your oil, bog standard oil, with the end there make sure you cut the nib off, which Ian forgot, I had to point that out, so you cut that off, Shove that in there, squeeze, that fills up the reservoir. So that's all nice and filled then with oil. Then the next part, this is the bit that works the muscles, you've then got to prime it and get force all that oil all the way from here right down to the dispensing nib. To do that, you just pull this section off. Pull that off, I'll show you. Pull that off just like that. Pop that bit straight in the nib in. Lift her up and squeeze and squeeze and squeeze and squeeze just remembering to switch the adjuster on top of the scott oiler reservoir um, to prime so it allows the oil to flow down yes yes uh -huh. um so yeah you push and push and push huff and puff and eventually the oil as you can see there that will work its way all the way down through your tubing and out to the rear nib to the nib at the bottom and then that's it you just connect everything back up And then we move on to the next part, which we'll cover two seconds. Right, peeps. Last part of the Scott Oil installation is to set the flow rate. Um, that, you know, basically uh, how quick or how slow you get oil down your chain. Uh, it's been a couple of weeks since I installed the Scott Oiler. I've done about 1,200 miles, um, and I've used a lot of oil. So obviously, I hadn't set it uh, right to begin with. So we'll just run through how we need to do that. Uh, first things first, we need to get the engine running. So we'll get the engine running, um, get the vacuum working in the Scott Oiler, and then we'll get to work with the flow. Okay. Right, we're just waiting for the first trip. And as soon as we get the first trip, I'll start my watch. It just starting to come. As soon as that drops, we'll start. Right, that's it dripped. So we'll start the clock and we'll wait for the next one. Ideally, we want one to two every 60 seconds. That's one 48 seconds. So we'll just wait and see how long the next one takes. One minute 34. So I'm happy with that. Yeah, that's not too bad. That's okay, that one. Um, I loosened this right off because it was... Um, it was chucking out oil before. So I've uh, turned it right down. You modify the flow. Just here. Part of the valve there. I don't know if you can see at the top here, the swings round. It's got a prime to the left, so clockwise. Turn it clockwise all the way, that's prime, that's your maximum flow rate. Uh, turn it anti clockwise all the way around to here, and that's your minimum flow rate. So um, we are, I've just moved that myself, so I'll just put that back. For me, it's between the S and the C of Scott Oiler. That is pretty much a perfect flow rate for me now. 
Um, so that is us. Uh, Scott Oiler seems to be working really well. Chain is looking lovely now. It was looking quite bad to begin with before I put the Scott Oiler on. And uh, now all's good. That's us. Thanks very much to Scott Oiler. Brilliant to have you on board, guys. Good Scottish company, like that. Um, and yeah, great. I'm, uh, I'll be testing it. <laughs> Uh, every type of weather you can think of here in the UK. Going to be doing track days, going to be doing long distance, um, local rides, commuting, uh, right through to the trip, uh, which is going to be everything. Desert, jungle, mud, freezing temperatures, the extreme heat of the deserts, you name it, I'll be going through it. Uh, and I'm sure it's going to um, do me well, stand me well. So uh, thanks very much guys for coming on board. Stay tuned. One, two, three, four!